Welcome to Commuteless, a show about working from home with less stress and more freedom so you can live life on your terms. I'm Kyle Adams, and I'm joined by my co-host, Corey Miller. Hello. As well as a very special guest, Austin Saylor. Very, very special guest. Hello. So special. (laughs) Austin Saylor is a motion designer working from home, and we ask him to come on the show and talk about his experience We're super excited to have people to actually interview and talk with outside of just Corey and I. So it's it's good to have you here, Austin. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to chat about this. Yeah, definitely. Just to get kick things off uh, instead of going right into our topic, I want to talk a little bit about you and uh, how long have you been working from home? I have been working from home for about four years. Just a little more than four years, yeah. What were you doing before that? I worked at a software company for about eight years and uh, not from home. Actually, I, I got about like two weeks I got to work from home, maybe three, which were like the most exciting weeks <laughs> of my entire seven and a half years there. <laughs> right. So it was like a luxury back in the day. Now it's oh, like, man. oh man, working I worked, from home. I worked hard to get those those weeks to work from home. One of those weeks was at a beach Ooh. and uh, man. I was so productive, and then I got to go like swim in the ocean in the afternoon. It was great. Living the dream. Yeah, I think I remember when you you either had just started working from home or you were starting to, and you're like, "This is this is fantastic." <laughs> yes, I was. I vlogged when I started uh, working from home, and I left my job, and a couple weeks into it, I got to go to the beach and work from there. Oh, it was great. That's amazing. I missed the beach. <laughs> <laughs> I think the beach came to you, Corey. <laughs> well, are, I mean, are we going to talk about that, Kyle? I didn't know that we had to talk about that. I mean, we should. It's relevant. I'm staring at it right now. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, so I'm living in the Midwest right now up in Illinois. And last week there was kind of this unbearably, ridiculously a lot of rain that poured down upon the house. And this house, I guess, has some break in the foundation somewhere, which isn't concerning at all. Uh, and so the basement flooded. So that was, that was, that was fun. That was a, that was a fun thing to wake up to that one morning. <laughs> so we just have all these like, uh, you know, the whole basement where I'm recording right now is all in turmoil and there's fans everywhere because the mold people had to come in and set up like 10 fans and a giant dehumidifier. And, uh, it's, um, did you say the mold people or the mold people? That's correct. <laughs> So, yeah. and But that's, I mean, we should also do a show about that sometime, Kyle, about like what to do when your the normal people. setup, when, well, also when the mole people show up, but what do you do when your, when your setup just like randomly changes? Cause I've been, I've had to work at the table upstairs and up in uh, our bedroom, uh, we're getting off the subject, but yeah, that's been kind of a interesting, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that whole thing sometime in the future. I'm episode. glad you braved it and you, and you're still joining us. Well, I'm in my canoe recording this, so. All right. So, Austin, uh, (laughs) (laughs) back to you. (laughs) Now that you're now that you're working from home, what what exactly do you do? What do you do from home? Yeah, I'm a a motion designer. So, about half my time, I spend freelancing with uh, clients like ConvertKit and Pat Flynn and Brian Harris at Video Fruit or at Growth Tools now, and um, yeah, lots of other. Freelance clients, and then I also teach people how to animate using After Effects through a course called the Lettering Animation Course. And now I have a, a membership, so I'm I'm doing both the te- or animating for clients and then teaching people how to do what I do. You're a busy guy, I know that for sure. I'm a busy guy, <laughs> and I appreciate you taking time for us. By the way, <laughs> and I never have lazy days either. Never. <laughs> yeah. Right. So as you're doing all these amazing things, what does your setup look like? My setup, I'm in a, a little room off of my kitchen, which is, it feels like a third, like a third room or whatever, like an office space. I just wish there was a door, you know, a wall and a door, but it, it does the job. And I've got a big desk, uh, my iMac, a little, I've got my, my second monitor, which you guys can't even see, is a Wacom pen tablet 
So I use that as a second monitor or for drawing. Little boom stand with my mic. And right now it's a little cluttered with like seven or eight notebooks. I'm trying to figure out where to store my notebooks. <laughs> but um, yeah, on good days, it's very clean and orderly. And my, my bookshelf, I'm really proud of. I've got a color coordinated bookshelves. Uh, nice. Rachel has started putting some of her overflow books on the middle <laughs> shelf here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and art from a lot of my buddies. Tilt my webcam. So I, see, I that. see that you also have an optimist. Um, yes. Little design there from our friend Eric Friedenson. I'm also, I'm currently wearing that shirt right now. Yes, such a good so shirt. There you go. Eric Friedenson. He's a good dude. Yes. 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 Hey, speaking of that, I have, oh no, I don't, I don't oh, have wait. anything right now. Oh, but I do have optimist things. <laughs> you just, you just want to be part of the group there, Kyle. <laughs> I Me do. too. Well, so you, before we started the show, you were talking about how you and Rachel, you currently live where you live. You've, been there like about three years almost three years yeah about three years so this whole setup has that changed over time like you said you're you're kind of right off the kitchen um, it's changed a little bit just because of like coronavirus times we have a roommate yeah. and she's been working from home and so we have a third bedroom that's been a guest bedroom slash rachel's office so rachel's my wife kelsey's our roommate mm -hmm. and um they're sharing the third bedroom kind of taking turns when kelsey needs to have a a call with people, Rachel will leave the room. When Rachel needs a call, Kelsey will go to her room or the living room. So we kind of play musical chairs and find different spaces. But yeah, this space has actually been different too because at some at one point we had Rachel's sister living with us as well. And so Abby, her sister, and I shared this room with two desks and we faced each other. It's big enough room to, you know, we just, I like reconfiguring things all the time anyways. Mm. Um, and so I don't know, I've, I've kind of landed on a thing that works, but now because I like reconfiguring things, Rachel's going to share this desk with me. It's big enough that I can shift my stuff to the right and she's going to be on the left, but on the other side facing us or facing me facing, she's going to be facing us. That doesn't make sense, <laughs> but yeah, we're excited to, uh, try some new things and get some, get a nice lighting set up in here. Nice. Do you exclusively work at that desk or do you sometimes wander off to the living room or something with a I'm laptop. A, I'm a wanderer. Um, <laughs> until coronavirus stuff happened, uh, starting in about January, I started going to a co-working space two to three times a week. And that was fun to get out. I like going to coffee shops. But, you know, the last two months, I've been working at home exclusively. So it's been this desk or the couch or the third bedroom if no one's in there. And so I like to bounce around it stimulates the brain and I don't know, but yeah, I, I like, I love switching things up. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's, we're just having to make do with the switching things up. It just happens to be the other room a lot. Actually, I think last week, I don't know if I sat at this desk at all. <laughs> Sometimes it's just like, I just don't feel like a space and I don't, I don't sit at this desk and I've got a laptop. So I'll work from that elsewhere. Are there any tasks you do better when you're not at your like, do you prefer to be at your desk for certain things and not at your desk for certain things? The only thing I know that I really need to be at my desk for is heavy animation stuff, just because this computer can handle it better. Um, but I really, I don't have any tasks that specifically. I've tried like I'm going to write on my laptop on the couch, but sometimes it just doesn't work, and I go sit at my desk and I'm like, yeah, the words are flowing, <laughs> and so. It's nice to have op multiple options. If something's not working, I'll just try something else to, it's kind of like resetting the computer. Like it doesn't work. Try resetting. So if my brain stops working, I reset by moving to a different space. I know that feeling for sure. In fact, I think my next, so right now I have an iMac, like my main desktop and then a MacBook pro that I take around for my laptop. I think I'm just going to eventually consolidate to just the laptop and then have some big monitors I come plug into and make that my desktop because same with me. I, I wander around and sometimes I'm on this one. Sometimes I'm not. Yeah. I like that idea. That's cool. So what would you say is your favorite thing about working from home? Access to snacks. <laughs> <laughs> and now that I know you work by the kitchen. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah. Oh, I was about no. to say that that might be dangerous territory. <laughs> you totally broke the fourth wall earlier, by the way, because I've seen you in that room and I thought it was just its own little 
kind of like mine. I'm in a bedroom. I thought it was just its own room. And then you move the camera and I was like, there's a wow. door in a kitchen and a, yeah. <laughs> all this stuff over there. What is this? It totally feels like an, a legit office. And then you're like, wait, you're in the kitchen. <laughs> that's, that's one of the funny things about, you know, when you, when you're, when you work from home or you're working remote or whatever, and the, one of the only ways that you connect with your, uh, your teammates or maybe in your case, in your case, clients or, uh, you know, other, other people who are doing similar things that you're contracting or whatever. Um, sometimes the only context that you get is what comes through on the camera. Mm -hmm. And this, you know, this last week I've been moving around a lot because I obviously couldn't be down in the basement, uh, cause it was, you know, flooded, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, uh, and so I, you know, I'd be up in the kitchen, you know, or at, you know, in the dining room, which is part of the kitchen or up in the bedroom, there's a little desk that I moved up in there. And so my teammates would be like, so, so where are you, where are you now? <laughs> you know, like, cause it's that's all you get. It's just like this little window in and, and some, and sometimes you're just like, I wonder like this, this whole context, like what would it look like if I just kind of like backed out and usually people try to keep what's on camera really nice and orderly. Yeah, yeah. And then as soon as you pan away, it's like, right. They're like, you know, <laughs> they're wearing their pajamas and there's like toilet paper strewn around <laughs> or whatever. Yes. Like, you don't get the full who, picture. Who has toilet paper strewn around right now? That's some, it's a hot commodity. You gotta it's blasphemous. protect that. that that's, I guess that I guess that is true. It's, it's like gold. So other than access to snacks, <laughs> is, <laughs> is there anything else you you really love about working from home? Like, is there a? I guess what I'm getting at here is, do you have a dedication to working from home, or do you just happen to be someone who works from home? Yeah, I mean, it started out as I left my job to do freelance and see if I could make that work. Um, but it's turned into, I have a hard time picturing myself going to work in an office. I was enjoying having the option to go into a co-working space whenever I wanted, but that was not like a, I gotta be in here. Now, if I had like a dedicated office space within a co-working space, I know some people have like a, you know, a place where either multiple people can work or whatever. If it's my own thing, I could see that working, but as a solo person, I love just being able to work from home. Um, <clears throat> so another element of that to me is, or that, that I can just picture a stark contrast from the office job I had to working from home was just not having somebody looking over my shoulder. Um, that kind of, I felt like that happened a lot, not in a malicious way. It's just, you know, people are walking by and it, if I was on Twitter or doing something that didn't look work related, it's kind of like this uh, awkward and now I just have the responsibility of getting my work done and I enjoy that better. So it's funny though, because the two favorite, my two favorite things about working from home, literally snacks, like whenever <laughs> I go into a space, I'm like, what am I going to bring to eat? Yeah, right. <laughs> um, I don't like feeling like, oh, I'm out of food. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I don't always eat it. I just need to have it there. It's like a safety thing. And, um, but that and not having somebody work looking over my shoulder are my two favorite things. They're also like the worst things because I have access to all the snacks I want, uh, or have in the kitchen and I don't have somebody, you know, holding me accountable to getting the work right. done. Um, so yeah, it is a, a double edged sword, I guess, or two sides of the same coin. Um, the beauty is also the, the pain. Yeah. I know for a lot of people that's one of the big things, you know, is having that freedom to feel like you can just do your work and get it done. I know that was a big thing for me when I started working from home was just that feeling of, I don't have someone, like you said, I don't have someone looking over my shoulder. When I was working in an office building there, they put me on the corner cubicle. So it was like honeycomb cubicles, which is really weird, but that made, that made it where there's one that's on a corner that's not fully blocked in or anything. So people just walk by like you're in, you're in this two way traffic situation and people just walk by your desk. And that was, that was terrible. And then when I started working from home, it's like, okay, now I'm being judged on what actually matters, which is that I'm getting the work done and doing it on time. Right. Yep. Having that self-discipline, I think is, is, is a discipline that you grow, you know, like a, a lot of people, they, they, they fear working from home or working remote because they're like, I would just, I just play, 
video games all day or I would just not get enough done. And and there's so much more to that. Like it's not just about motive, like finding the motivation and, and, you know, at a certain point, I mean, at a certain level, Austin, I'm sure it's like part of the motivation is you need to get paid because you're running your own business. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like you got to get the work done so you can get paid. Or, or you already have been paid and you got to get the work done so that you can get another job and not have clients telling each other that you don't deliver and, and so on. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot more self-motivation when you're running your own business because that's your livelihood and uh, your reputation is everything. Uh, one thing I really appreciated that someone said as coronavirus stuff was sort of kicking up and it was addressing the concern of are people going to be productive when they go work from home and someone's response to that was they're going to be as productive as they were in the office people are very creative people can like slack off in a cubicle in an open office area like people are very creative with not getting work done if they don't want to do it oh yes (laughs) it does not matter (laughs) yeah um so like they're just going to be more bored looking like they're working i don't know it's just i don't think it makes that big a difference um yeah but it's it's such a ta- it, it was more of a taboo like yeah we don't want to have a remote team we don't want to allow people to work from home because mm-hmm. those when people ask for that that just means they're trying to slack and right we can't hold them accountable if, but what i my thought to that is if you can't hold people accountable to getting their work done you're not measuring the right things you don't know what they need like if you measure someone's day by how long their butt was in a chair then how can you expect to like have someone produce great work if you have no idea what they're supposed to be doing? Yeah. Yeah. If there's no output, that's an obvious sign that someone isn't working. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it also, I mean, that also highlights like what, what are you placing your trust in? And do you have more trust in your employees? Like let's say if you have employees, do you have more trust in your employees or more fear that, they're not going to bring you as much money as you want or or you don't have as much control over them as as you want. And there's a there I mean there's so much else there there's there's a lot lot of other factors that are introduced there but um I think for a lot of people when especially when when you you know you own your own business and things you have to build out your own frameworks because there's nobody else doing that for you. You know like um I've been working on uh, or, or the redevelopment for our, our new homepage at ConvertKit and at ConvertKit.com. Go check it out. Uh, not a sponsor, but, you know, call me. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the um, I've been working on the development for that, and this this quarter has really just felt like it's just like this weightiness and mental health, like all sorts of stuff. And so I haven't felt every single day like I'm at my peak, you know. And I think it was the uh, last week I'm on a call with Charlie, the designer that I work with. And she's like, yeah, so we were going to, you know, the deadline was going to be this week. But since I was a week behind, like, you think we can get this out the next week? And I'm like, uh, I don't, I don't know, actually. Like, that's really soon. There's all these crazy things. And then I got to the, like, mid of week and I was like, yeah, let's do it. You know, but she helped to give me that framework a little bit more of helping you know, set those deadlines and things. But when it's just you, you have to do that by yourself. So, mm-hmm. so, so then I want to turn that around and you then Austin and say, how do you, how do you build in frameworks and, um, and build up the discipline when it's just you deciding if you're going to work or not? That I would call that a big work in progress for me right now. It's, I mean, when it comes to client work, there's a natural deadline and I get the work done. Mm. Um, I'm a recovering procrastinator. And so (laughs) I, and I know that, and I know that I I know my weaknesses and I'm working on them or trying to build systems so that I don't have to fight against them. And, um, uh, but when it comes to like the business side where no one's asking me to create a new course on X, Y, or Z, I'm working to just like figure out what people need and build things to help them. Mm. And so that's all on me. Like, that's just like total, I, I don't know, but I I guess part of, part of my solution to that problem of not having a natural deadline is I have like a couple of business coaches that I talk with and my wife and I actually are doing an even better job recently of 
holding each other accountable and having like monthly and weekly meetings. Hmm. And um, I think we'll talk more about how we're working together soon. But yeah, one of the things we do is really try to hold each other accountable to hitting deadlines when it comes to projects. We're still working on how to figure like that out exactly because we are both married and helping each other with business. So there's a, right. a lot of like, it's a, it, it, everything gets shuffled together and emotions and feelings. And like, we want to protect our marriage more than we want to like be on each other to make sure the business stuff happens. And so there's a sensitivity that needs to happen in there. And I think we're pretty good about the, the sensitive side. We're actually trying to be a little bit harder on each other. <laughs> you know, I think I'm answering that question. I think yeah. I got, got through some of that good stuff. Yeah. You nailed it. You nailed it. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So speaking of working with your spouse, uh, that's, that's kind of the main thing we wanted to talk about today. Kind of dive into that a little bit more and I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, so what a segue. I know that all, you <laughs> always have to mention the segue, Corey. Stop. <laughs> it's not a good segue if you mention it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I know all three of us have, you know, during all of the COVID-19 lockdown stuff, uh, actually, Corey, you and Austin both work with your spouse, I think, just in general, mm-hmm. right? Um, but I've had that for the past couple of months. And so that's been an interesting new thing. And uh, something that I know, Austin, you are pretty passionate about. I know you've uh, worked through a lot of stuff. I'm curious to hear a lot more about that. I actually don't know a lot of the behind the scenes there, but I know that you've had to work through things and, like you said, set up some systems and that that kind of thing. Um, so I'm just curious to know, kind of in general, what does that look like on a regular basis? Yeah. So, yeah, we've we've both been working together from home for three plus years. So I, I left my job while Rachel had a full-time job. She helped me have a little more confidence that I could leave and figure out my business because she had some, she had her income coming in. And then once I built my business up enough, she quit her job and she came home to work. She's writing novels. Actually, she just published her first book, a memoir. Nice. Um, three weeks ago, April 25th. And uh, so that was exciting. But yeah, we've um, we have been working together for three years, and the, the our kind of system for working that we've figured out now is that it's kind of cyclical. So it always starts the day before, um, or the current day, or whatever. I don't know, it's a weird way of thinking. But at the end of each day, we and this is on good days. It's not every single day. Sure. On the the days we're working well, we do a shutdown sequence at the end of the day. We write down. Uh, the tasks that maybe we didn't finish that we need to do tomorrow. We consult our weekly checklist of things we need to make sure we accomplish during the week. Um, Write down tomorrow's tasks, uh, kind of like in a most important to least important um, sequence. And then we shut off for the night. Like we stop working. Sometimes I have to keep working if it's like a deadline but we really try to honor that like shutdown time. It's usually like six o'clock or so. And that's been helping us really separate work and evening time that we can just make dinner, watch a movie, exercise, kind of do what we feel like doing. Um, and that's, that's been super helpful because I know with like when we first started, there was no beginning and end of the day. We just worked and then worked and then maybe took a break here and there and then kind of worked into the evening which I don't think was like terrible. We were both figuring out our business and working hard to stay like get off the ground kind of thing. But setting that deadline at the end of the day has been really wonderful for saving our energy for the next day. We actually are more excited when you just cut things off. Even if you're like in in the flow in a in the zone or whatever, just saying like, all right, it's time let's end the day. And then, be excited about starting the next day. So that's been really cool. Um, and we usually have like a morning kind of routine where I usually wake up, make breakfast. She gets up, we eat, take our dog for a walk, have a hopefully smart, uh, or small chat for the day, like a morning chat. But anyways, yeah, we do like a, a morning routine and then get the day started. Uh, but really having like a plan for the day has been super helpful 
And one of the things that I know that's been kind of instrumental in us not butting heads with each other in the middle of the day is we read the work, uh, the book Deep Work. And that gave us a really good framework for understanding that we can say, I need an hour and a half of no interruptions. Mm. I'm putting my phone in the other room. I'm turning notifications off and I'm focusing. And we really respect that time if we need it. We don't do it every single day, but it's a, a great way for us to separate like, I'm at work, <laughs> like I'm not going to think about dishes. I'm not going to think about laundry. It's time for me to focus. And then if, if one of us does it, the other's like, yeah, I'm going to do a deep work session too. So we have language for it. Just we call it, I need a deep work session. And we know what that means. And that gives us that space to, to just separate and get focused. Mm. We also do like these little collaboration sessions where sometimes we'll spend half a day workshopping maybe marketing things that Rachel wants to do for her book that she's not sure how to technically do. And I'm, I'm more technically minded or then there's like copywriting things that she is stronger at that I need to do for my sales page. And so we'll workshop, spend a half an afternoon workshopping things for me. And so it's been pretty cool to, to start collaborating a lot more uh, probably in the last six months. And we've really enjoyed those, those like collaboration times we give each other. We started on doing on on weekends, and then we're like, we could just do this during the week. It's hmm. our business; we can do what we want. It's like we're, <laughs> yeah, right. we build our own world; we can do it. That's awesome. That's super. That's cool. really cool. So that's a big kind of overview of how we work together. I, I think love the that. most collaborative my wife and I got while she was working from home is uh, proofreading emails for each other. <laughs> that happens on the regular here for both both of us. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have that well, thing where you're just like, can I read this to you and see if it sounds right? We have that all the time. My co-working is like, Christiana, look, I'm just going to say a lot of words here. You might understand some of them. Yes, as you have said to me prior, I just need to say these words. Uh, can you just nod and tell me that I'm doing a good job? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's great. That's Actually, yeah, I, I love when Rachel hears me talk about animation and she's like, those words didn't make any sense to me, <laughs> but right. you sound smart. <laughs> <laughs> Something that you said that really stood out to me and I really love, um, and it's, this is just more like a little kind of a, a, a note on that, is you talked about having a shared language, something that you both knew. So there are little words and little notes that you can say these little terms and you both immediately know what that is. Um, you know, we, we, episode six, I think Kyle, we talked about communication with, um, the people that you're close to the people that you live with. And, and, and that those things are important because then you can be like, Hey, we know this thing. I need focus work or I need, you know, um, I need to get, go into a deep work session or whatever it might be. Then you have that understanding. You have that definition that both of you have, and can understand without being like, oh, well, you said this thing, but I didn't really know, or or whatever. Yeah, I, I, and I don't have to ex- don't have to explain like, hey, yeah. I really need because yeah, I don't have to, I don't have to justify right why I need her to like not bother me, or <laughs> vice versa, or vice versa. Yeah, yeah, that's brilliant. I love that. Yeah, I ran into that a lot when we first started having some time where we worked from home together. I started running into that a lot where it's like. I had to explain in links, hey, I'm going to go do this thing. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's good to have that that language and those signals in place for sure. Mm. So what would you say is your biggest struggle working together from home? We are we both like talking. <laughs> I mean, I, I particularly like talking and but we just have a good time chatting. And so like uh, sometimes our morning sessions of touch base, talk about what we're up to, make sure we're like, you know, do we need to assist each other in anything can turn into an hour and a half long discussion. It's usually about business. Where do you think your thing's going? What are your dreams? What are your aspirations and fears? And they're always really good conversations, but they're not the best for productivity for the day. And when Abby, Rachel's sister lived here, she loves to chat as much as I do. So sometimes we'd get into like a two and a half hour long deep discussion, just like real deep and heavy. And, you know, Rachel would just be like, I got to go get some work done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And she's a lot better at just being like, nope, 
this needs to stop. We need to get some stuff done. So that's that's honestly one of our biggest challenges uh, working from home and working together is staying focused and getting stuff done. And we've got a, like a really cool role, role model is Rachel's other sister and brother-in-law. They are action takers. And they're often when Rachel and I have been sitting on the couch for an hour and a half chatting, we'll look at each other and be like, we should get some work done. You know who wouldn't be sitting here just chatting forever? Anna and Eric, <laughs> they would have gotten so much done in this hour and a half. And so we, it's fun to have like that. Another it's like shared language. We understand that, Hey, let's be more like Hannah and Eric today and just do the things. That's a tough topic to approach as well. So I'm curious if you have any, like, are there any established kind of signs you have between each other for, you know, rather than just saying, will you please stop talking? <laughs> <laughs> like, is there anything you kind of have to signal to each other? Hey, I actually really need to focus right now without upsetting the other person. We don't, um, but it's probably something that will, will, that, you know, if, if we were on this podcast six months from now, maybe we'll have that shared language. Um, I think for me, the, the issue that I've recognized in myself is that I'll chat, 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 and then be like, wait, I got to get some work done. And she's like, okay, <laughs> like. Can I respond? Right, right. <laughs> and I'll I'll spill every like the podcast I was listening to super early in the morning when I woke up. I'll tell her everything, and then what that reminded me of, and this book that I want to read. And then I'm like, gotta go, and she's just left spinning with nothing, you know. And I'm recognizing that I am the chatty Kathy of the group, <laughs> but then I'm also I can't just be like, gotta cut it out without yeah, you know, just finding that balance of not talking too much. Um, but also not like giving her space to, to express the things that are on her mind. That's very personal and very individual to us, but um, it's something that it's like a, it's good to find that awareness of where you are in your relationship and communication about the thing you, the things that you need really. Um, and giving the other person the space to express and feel like safe to respond and, yeah, having that psychological safety net that I the other here's another another one where it's like I I can recognize in myself that I think I'm working on is when Rachel comes to me with an idea, it feels terrible, but I will just like be like, no, I don't I don't know if that would work. And it's like, oh shoot, I shouldn't have shut that down. I should have just been like, cool, what else? Or you know, I, I, I'm very quick to, I guess I'm comfortable with her and I feel like we're, we're vibing and we can figure this out. Um, but it's just something that I've recognized that uh, when we're working together, I have to consciously be more open to listening to an idea that I don't, that I wouldn't have come up with myself and just being like, cool, let's explore that. Um, because I know that that shuts her down whenever I go, nah, not a good idea. She's like, oh, well, he thinks I'm dumb. <laughs> I'm like, I don't. That's not what I mean. But we're we're figuring out how to have language. Maybe it's mostly like me figuring out how not to like be a jerk um, <laughs> yeah. unintentionally. Do you have to, do you talk about those things at the moment or do you come back to it later and say, hey, I did this thing earlier. You know, how, how is it that you come, about, uh, come up yeah. with the language based on one of those moments? Well, so I think a, a, it's not a specific example. What would happen though is I say something that offends Rachel. I, I cut her off. I interrupt her or I tell her her idea probably won't work. Just blurting my idea out or whatever. And then Rachel takes that and goes, hmm, guess I'm done here. <laughs> and then she gets quiet and I kind of recognize that she got quiet and we awkwardly like figure out how to navigate out of that situation. And I let it sit for a while. And then I, I go say like, Hey, I think I, I think I did you wrong there. Sometimes we'll talk about it in the moment, but a lot of times for us, it like we, we spend a little bit of time like sitting away from each other mm. and talk about it later. Um, and often, even if I don't recognize immediately, I can see it on Rachel's body language and I'm like, something's up. Right. Can we talk about it? Cause there's a good chance it might've been because of what I said. 
<laughs> right. And um, I'm learning to own to own that and not defend myself. Hmm. Yeah, so I was going to ask what you do to keep your relationship healthy, but I think through all of this, we kind of have that answer. It's, you know, communicating. I, I'm hearing a lot about being aware of each other and having that open communication. Yeah, it's um, communication is something that we've been good at and been very intentional about ever since we've been dating. It's, we've been married for, it'll be eight years in June. Congratulations. And so, yeah, thanks. Um, and we've, it's, it's interesting like being in a, a committed relationship for nine years and then we've been married for eight. We've changed a lot over the years. Like we're not the same people that we were then, but from the beginning, we really committed to being there for each other as we grow. And we've, we're both big on like, if you're not growing, you're dying or like, if it's not growing, it's not alive. And so personally, we're growing together, we're growing and changing and supporting each other along the way. So we still have arguments and conflict on sometimes a weekly basis, sometimes more frequently, sometimes less frequently, but it always ends up being a good thing. And, and we, even though it doesn't feel good in the moment, like having that awareness of conflict is actually good and it's without any conflict, it's hard to have growth. Um, yeah, we're just like, we have that awareness that, that that's going to pull us through and make us stronger in the end. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's powerful for sure. You have an interesting kind of side variable as well in that you also have a roommate who works from home and I'm, and that's, I mean, that's, there's their whole different dynamic there because one is your spouse and one is a roommate. Are there any similarities that you have to kind of engage with or, or, or are they all just very different on how you communicate with this other person? Um, yeah, know, it's, I, it's quite a bit different because we don't work together at all. She has her job and we don't collaborate ever. So, and I'm not married to her, <laughs> um, <laughs> that whole thing, but yeah, it's, it's, that's a different one, but the way we've, and I, well, we weren't sure how it was going to go or like. Uh, we've been working from home forever, but we didn't know what it was going to be like with her working here. And so we just approached it from like a, okay, so during the day we usually have just done whatever we want in this space, but we want to honor the fact that you're working here and we just need to communicate about what we, what we all need. Mm. And it's probably going to change over time. Then we don't know how long we're going to be doing this. And so basically we it, if we know that we like, for instance, right now we're recording, it's the evening. We normally would just be like hanging out, making dinner, deciding if we're going to watch a Japanese reality TV show or a Pixar <laughs> movie. But I let them know that we're going to be recording this podcast. So they're like, cool, we'll make dinner. And they're there in the back room in Kelsey's bedroom watching Parasite. It's a movie that I don't think I can handle because I can't handle movies more intense than Jurassic Park. So... <laughs> They're like, cool, perfect opportunity. We'll go watch this movie while you're recording. And um, yeah, so we just communicate a lot about like, I need, you know, 12 to 2 quiet in the house because I'm recording or I've got an important meeting, those kind of things. Mm. Yeah. And something Kelsey does that's pretty cool is she'll like do a little walk around the neighborhood at the end of the day to transition from work to home. It's almost like she's walking home, which she used to do anyways. Nice. That's awesome. Pretty smart. Yeah. Well, cool. Um, I'm curious, kind of getting a little bit into the technical side of things, but uh, do you have any tools or resources specifically you feel like have helped you or even you and your wife work from home together? I don't know if I have too many technical resources. Uh, one, one, we use the, well, it's now Microsoft to do. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. The app, we put our groceries on there. It's not exactly a work from home specific thing, but it's something we use as a couple that we act like we've tried other things before to like, see if we could like sync up with this or that use Evernote or notion and, and shared Google docs. But like, we just haven't really found or groove with those other things, but we have not stopped using what is now the to-do list. And anytime I'm like, all right, creamer, just add it to the list. <laughs> She'll go to the grocery store. I'll add a thing, text her, be like, make sure you refresh or whatever. Right. And, right. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit off topic, but we love 
having that thing kind of sync up. Right. Um, Cause that was Wonderlist before, right? Yeah. Wonderlist. Yeah. And now to do. Got it. I um, think what's great is that none of that is off topic for this show. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's about working and living in. I mean, you work and live in the same space. So, um, yep. anything that helps you live better helps you work better. And anything that helps you work better helps you live better. So true, that is true. Mm. Yeah, you know. Well, I was going to say something about work life balance, and I, I kind of balk at the concept of like always needing to have really good work life balance because I'm kind of a big believer in bigger picture balance. Um, when Rachel was launching her book, we worked so many hours and shed tears and worked our butts off and did things we didn't think we were going to be able to do. And that was a beautiful thing and it was great. And we did it for like a month and then we took some time to relax Mm. and like not be stressed out about it. So the balance came from big ups and downs, not like every day we have to do this, this, and this to, to maintain like we can handle balance. Uh, you know, it's like, a. I guess if you have like a tightrope walker, they don't always have to have the, the stick like perfectly balanced mm. and they don't have to be like, there's minor adjustments, but like if they swing like this, they're not done. They, they just like counterbalance. And if you can handle counterbalancing longer periods of time, I don't know. That's, that analogy just popped mm. in my head. I don't, maybe yeah. it's interesting. No, I but, agree um, with you for sure. It's it's that balance of the like you said, the bigger picture of are you are you actually taking breaks or are you just constantly if you're constantly working and you never take breaks, that's where the problem is. Or if you're yeah. constantly not working, <laughs> right. that's the other place the problem is. <laughs> yep. Um uh one other thing that I just I recommend to everybody is reading the book Deep Work it has helped us stay more focused and get be more have had more productive hours after reading that book and not just reading the book but reading it together to have that common language mm. and understanding of like this is actually really important to make time for deep work uh just that totally focused no distractions time um yeah that's that's a huge one for us man we've been actually doing more and more like reading books together. I didn't mention that before, but we just read Atomic Habits. That was really helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, Rachel's really good at taking notes on books. She'll like always do this like one pager at the end. I'm like, oh, I should be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, we both read The Four Agreements. It's a really interesting book. Also been super helpful for our like kind of mental state of just being okay. Have y'all ever heard of that book? No. It's an interesting book. And The Four Agreements are basically that you... You know what? It's going to be better. <laughs> four. Do it. Do it. There's so, only four of them. I should. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The four agreements are be impeccable with your word. Don't take anything personally. Don't make assumptions and always do your best. Hmm. And they're just, they're very simple things, but they actually work really well together. So if you are impeccable with your word, then you're careful to what you agree to, what you say yes to. If you say it, you're going to do it if you don't take anything personally. It was funny. I, this, the, the day I read the chapter about don't take things personally, somebody said something that felt like a very much like a direct attack on something that I was doing with my marketing. Mm. And I was like, my first gut feel, it was just like, I wanted to throw up. I felt terrible. I'm a Enneagram nine. I like, I'm a peacemaker. I don't <laughs> want anyone to be upset. And so when someone says they're upset with me, it just makes me feel so, it's like the worst feeling. Yeah. But I had just read this thing about don't take things personally. And if you don't take things personally, you can ask for clarification. Like, can you clarify? And so I actually asked for clarification from somebody who, what felt like a direct attack and they explained. And within like a minute or two on Slack, I was able to go like, to go from the state of feeling like I had offended somebody and feel terrible to like on the same exact same page with somebody, we just, I misunderstood what he said. And Rachel had actually watched me do it. She was like, how did you do that? I would have been so mad. I would have been mad for days. And I was like, Oh, I just read the chapter of the book. She was like, I have to read that book. And so she's read it. And we have this now common language of like, all right, I'm trying not to take this personally. Can you help me? How can I do that? Um, yeah, it's just, it's pretty cool. 
That's awesome. And the last, the last one being don't, uh, is always do your best. That chapter is all about like, not you always have to be your best, but it's always do your best no matter what situation you're in. If you're sick, your best is not going to look very good. If you're feeling strong, your best might look amazing. Um, so, but if you can always just do the best you can in any moment, you won't ever have regret. Like you're always just going to be like at peace with who you are and what you're doing. That's brilliant. Yeah. yeah I totally recommend the book. It's amazing. It's a, it's a short read, but pu- punches a powerful, packs a powerful punch. <laughs> punches a powerful pack. <laughs> Pun- it punches a powerful pack. I'll tell you what. Brilliant. Yeah. That, that don't take anything personally part. That's definitely important for you as someone who owns your own business as well, because so many people see, they see a distinction between your business and you where sometimes if you're that close to it, it's really hard to see any kind of distinction because you own it, you maintain it, you're there with it. Even if you don't own it. I mean, there's times where I'm doing support work for convert kit and someone is just kind of like, you know, passive aggressive about something and I have to step back and realize, okay, that's not about me <laughs> as an individual. Like they don't know who I am or anything. It's about something they feel like uh, the company as a, as a whole is doing. And it's not even about a certain individual. It's the entity that is this company. And yeah. so, and that's even if someone important. says something about you, Kyle, that, if, that you feel is a direct attack on you that actually has way more to do with that person's like mental model of the world and the way you and your ex- uh, existence has like disrupted them. But it, it has so much more to like anybody in your position, they would have thought the same thing. It's not you. It's what they have in their minds and what they want. And you happen to not be what they want. So it actually has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with them. Um, it's the saying, the customer is always right. I'm, I'm no, <laughs> no, 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 because the customer is always right. Doesn't mean the customer is always correct. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. They're always right. Oh, s- it means stop it. they always think that they're right. Right. And that's not, that's not a slam on people for being customers. Yeah. It's, it's just a fact. Like if someone comes to you thinking something, even if that might be incorrect, it's very hard to just change their mind instantly because they have this preconceived notion. That's so interesting. I, I, it's this whole taking things personally thing. You've got me. I, I'm all, I'm all <laughs> shook up, dude. Because like, I'm as soon as you said that, I'm like, I attach myself so deeply to the work that I produce, and uh, and sometimes that's in a good way, and sometimes in it's not not so much of a good way. Um, you know, sometimes I, I, I take things. I even take like positive things very personally like wow Corey, this page looks amazing or this code did like it's really good like i'm you mentioned you're an enneagram nine i'm a type three so i am a um i i thrive on uh, like like achievement and people acknowledging me and saying hey you did a good job and like there's a lot of that's kind of built up within Mm -hmm. and um and so then it's when it's conversely it's like hey this page is broken or hey, this doesn't work. I'm like, they're saying I'm a bad developer and I don't know what I'm doing. I shouldn't even be working at this company, and <laughs> you know. <laughs> and um, but I, I, but I love that that part of it too, because there's also a part of working from home where communication is so different too. You know, when you're sitting with somebody, or you're at, a, you know, you're in an office, you're at a desk together, and they're saying stuff, or you're sitting across from each other body language, nuance. Um, there's so much that goes into communicating those things that gets lost when you only have this virtual way of connecting with people. And so asking for clarification, um, you know, saying things like, oh, you know, what, what, made, what made you think that way or what made you feel that way to kind of open that up a little bit more because not only are we in a, in a world where we're speaking you know, in this internet way, oftentimes we don't say the full thing because it's, you type out the short version of it 
instead of like, oh, I'm going to sit here and kind of talk about it and, and elaborate. Yeah, I think the willingness to, and it actually takes a lot of bravery and courage to ask for clarification because yeah. it shows, it can feel like I look like I don't know what I'm talking about. Like I don't get it. Huh, yeah. But it, it takes a bit of like willingness to be vulnerable and say, can you clarify that? It never, it, I don't think people generally perceive clarifying questions as like, oh, you're so dumb, you need it clarified. But it can feel like there's a resistance that a lot of people have. I know I have. Because I'm like, uh, I should probably know exactly what they mean. Yeah. I'll, I'll figure it out on my own, or I'll, I'll try something and see if that appeases them. But asking, I've I've started asking clarifying questions a lot more recently, and it just saves so much time and yeah. heartache. And yeah, I mean, even just something as simple as as what do you mean by that? Yeah, it's also super disarming, right? Because Let's say, for example, someone just comes up to you and they're like, I think you're arrogant and stupid. They, they probably expect you to be like, well, you don't know what you're talking about and you leave. <laughs> you're arrogant and stupid. But if you say, oh, I, I'm sorry you feel that way. Can you kind of explain more why you, why you think that? It's like, oh, uh, oh, uh, <laughs> and you've just, you've just countered their point as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. Well, that's awesome. Thanks for those recommendations. One for- one other extra point to what you were saying, Corey, is about the don't take things personally. Yeah, in that book, he really hammers home the point. And this one's, a, I think, even harder to swallow. It's when somebody compliments you, also don't take that personally. Hmm. But I, I'm the same way. Like as a as an Enneagram 9, I, I connect to most other numbers except for 8. And... <laughs> that element of wanting to be recognized for the work I do is a core thing of like my motivation. If I clean the dishes in the sink or clean the kitchen, I'm like, Rachel wakes up and comes out and I'm like, you you see that? Are you going to say anything? You know, I love hearing great job. Yeah. But even the, the phrase I love you comes from a place of like the person being happy (laughs) <laughs> uh, appreciative and I think that those things are real but there's there's this element of like do you like can you be self-sufficient on who you are being the person that you are and not rely on somebody telling you that you're good or defending yourself from somebody telling you're bad mm. um, it's kind of an interesting state of just awareness that those things don't need to affect you and you don't, you don't need the the praise, but you also can like hold back the, the criticism. Yeah. Anyways, that's just my plug for the book. Yeah. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. It's good. Insight. I'm going to, it's queued up in my cart right now. I'm going to buy it. Sweet. Nice. I should buy it. I'm, I'm one of those people that's really bad about buying books and being hyped about them and then not <laughs> reading them. <laughs> yeah. I've never done that before. I, mm. I do auto audio books. We're not sponsored by audible, but I use them, and you can get a thirty-day free trial. No, <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Well, thanks so much for being on the show, Austin. I I really appreciate you coming on. When we started talking about guests, I was like, Austin would be a fantastic guest. Oh, because I've seen you kind of. I think part of it's because we've kind of gone through this journey a little bit together, as far as mm-hmm. starting to work from home and. It was right around the same time we started working from home. And um, yeah, there's there's lots of struggles and changes and things that happen. So it's yep. great to have you here. Yeah, I really appreciate you having me on. I uh, I love chatting with you guys. And this topic was super fun. I've never actually talked about all of this stuff before. It's cool. It's so good. Yeah, that's that's one thing I'm excited about is this is one of those opportunities to kind of peel the curtain back for some people who mm-hmm. just generally get on podcasts that are just about their industry and that's it and so this is a great way to to look behind the scenes and see your kitchen (laughs) literally (laughs) literally (laughs) that'll be the new that'll be the new uh the new like subtitle for the show commuteless look behind the scenes and see the kitchen (laughs) that's terrible kyle don't do that yeah let's cut that out okay (laughs) so austin uh let people know where they can find you online. 
Yeah, find me on uh, fullharbor.com. That's harbor spelled the English way, or, oh, shoot, the American <laughs> way. <laughs> Dang, gum it. <laughs> F-U-L-L-H-A-R-B-O-R.com and Instagram at Full Harbor. Those are my, my main spots. And uh, come say hey. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, I didn't even tell you guys this. I am in the middle of creating a page for people to go check out. So fullharbor.com slash commuteless. Um, oh. I, I've started putting in a couple of resources that I touched on a little. I didn't actually get to fully, but one of the things that Rachel and I do for our, our breakdown, sorry, I'm totally ruined the outro. This is no, this is perfect. Different, different yeah, this style. Is great. Different Good. style. Um, I've got this really cool daily, like, I'll show you on the video, but you can go to uh, fullharbor.com slash commuteless. And basically I have like little breaks and work sessions throughout the day and a list of tasks on the other side. But I break down on that page, like how Rachel and I both work together and make this thing happen. That's awesome. The, the cool. daily thing's great. And our, our daily shutdown sequence has been just insanely helpful for us working from home. And I thought that might be kind of cool to have a, a resource. I've never put that on the internet before. So very nice. cool. for your viewers eyes only. So <laughs> I love that. Nice. Uh, Corey, where can people go to find the show online? You can go to commuteless.fm and uh, that's where you can find the show notes for this episode. Kyle, did we decide when this episode, like what episode number this was going to be? This is total behind the scenes as well. Oh, you just oh do yeah. like episode eight. Mm. Why not? Uh, what if, are they going to do? Kick us out? If you feel like you can edit it that fast, it's totally fine. Heck yeah, dude. Okay. Cool. We'll you make can go to episode eight. You can go to commuteless.fm. <laughs> oh, no. Let's just start that over. Well, you can go to commuteless.fm slash eight. That's where you can find the show notes for this episode. Um, and we'll make sure to put links to the books and to Austin. All of his stuff will be in there. And that's where you can find the show. And then also on Twitter and Instagram at commuteless. FM. You can also find me on Twitter as well at Corey D H Miller. And then also my uh, development blog, Corey D H Miller.com, which I drastically need to write another post about some of the things I've been learning. So I'm going to do that. Um, but Kyle wrapping it all up, where can people find you online? You can find me at Kyle or on Twitter at it's Kyle Adams. Nice. Thanks for listening, everyone. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Ow, ow. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs>